Today's lesson will be a review of some things that you would have learned in algebra, uh, maybe a pre-calculus course. So first of all, we're just going to look at what exp explicit equations are. Uh, you see it says defines y or f of x solely in terms of x. So the y is on one side or the f of x is on one side and all other or all the x's are on the other side. So you have a few examples there of some explicit equations. You have a line, a sinusoid, and then a, a natural log function. Implicit equations are equations that are not in explicit form. Uh, we have a circle there, x squared plus y squared equals 6, and then we have this uh, unique equation sine x times cosine y is equal to x. Uh, so um, that both of them could be solved for y, uh, but they, especially the first one, is not a function, um, so you would have to have two different equations for y for that. Inverses, um, not all inverses are functions, which we'll talk about what an inverse is shortly, and then a function must be one-to-one -to, -one to have an inverse that is also a function. So one-to-one uh, how do you tell if something's one, a one-to-one -one function? First of all, it has to be a function. Secondly, it would have to pass the horizontal line test, which is similar to the vertical test, line test. Uh, it's just that a horizontal line can only pass through one point at a time. can't have a horizontal line that passes through more than one point. If the slope is always positive or the slope is always negative, except that an isolated point, then it is one-to-one. -one and it would have an inverse. So the inverse is really when you just interchange your x and y within an equation or within a relation. If it's just a bunch of ordered pairs, you can switch all the x's and y's. So here's how we saw of it. Uh, a lot of times, if it's written in f of x form, we'll switch it to y equals form. We'll interchange x and y and solve for y. Graphs of inverses, so we can realize, and I'm not going to draw a function here because I think it'll be easier to see something that's not a function, but uh, if we had a parabola, which is not one-to-one, -one, so its inverse won't be a uh, function, but for um, an inverse, the graph of an inverse will be a reflection over the y equals x line. And so the inverse of this parabola would be actually a horizontal facing parabola. Uh, it's reflected over this y equals x line. And then the composition of inverses it says if you take uh, an inverse composed with the original function, you'll just get the x value. And um, also vice versa, if you take the original function composed with the inverse of x, you will just get x. It's really because the inverse undoes the original. So I have a few examples here. We're going to do a couple of these things. It says, example, let f of x equals 2x minus 3. Find the inverse of f at 4. So what we can do is we can realize that this is a line. So the inverse will be a function. So we can find the inverse. So we'll write this as y equals 2x minus 3. The inverse, what we need to do is interchange the x and the y. And solve for y so we can add 3 to both sides. And divide by 2. So our inverse is x plus 3 over 2. We could write it as our inverse is x plus 3 over 2, and we can plug in 4, like the problem asked. We can plug in 4. 4 plus 3 over 2 is 7 halves. So that is the value of the inverse. I forgot the negative, the inverse of f at 4. This one says find the inverse 
of 8, where the function is 4 natural log of x. So in order to do that, first we will write this as y equals 4 natural log of x. We'll switch x and y. So this will be our inverse. Switch x and y for natural log of y. And we want to solve for y. So this would be, um, could multiply both sides by a quarter. And then we could change to uh, exponential form. So e to the x over 4 equals y. And um, so that's also our inverse. So the inverse of x is e, e to the x over 4. And now we can plug in the 8. And it turns out that we plug in 8. We get 8 over 4 in the exponent, so it is e squared. All right, this next example, it gives us a function uh, as well as its inverse, which actually we found that up here. We didn't write it in this form, but that's the same thing. Find the inverse composed with f of 6 and f composed with the inverse of 6. Well, from above, from up here, which is almost off our page, we learned that both of these, if you take the the inverse composed with the function or the function composed with the inverse of some value, you are just going to get that value. So both of those are just equal to 6. The last one here says the in find f inverse of 9, where y equals f of x and y over 3 equals the cotangent of x. Well, we can switch x and y here. We could multiply both sides by 3, but let's go ahead and switch x and y. Let's see what happens here. Um, so our inverse is going to be x, x over 3 equals the cotangent of y. Well, when the cotangent of y equals x over 3, that means there's a triangle where y is the angle and the cotangent is x over 3. So cotangent is adjacent over opposite. Uh, and we want to find y. Mm. So we know tangent of y is going to be 3 over x, 3 over x, and we'll know that y equals the inverse tangent of 3 over x. So it's still talking about y, which was the same y up here. When we were trying to solve for that, we would know y equals that. And so we can now, we could write it as f inverse of x equals inverse tangent of 3 over x. And we can plug in 9. So inverse tangent of 3 over 9, which is 1 third. Inverse tangent of 1 third. Point three two one eight. We talked about explicit and implicit equations and then inverses and how to find inverses.